Okay, hi, welcome. I am here to give you a quick rundown on all things Flowdesk and then explain to you how to upload some of the email templates that came in your guide and answer a couple of common questions that I've had since starting email marketing. Um, I'm gonna share my screen really quick so I can show you the gist of what I'm talking about. So when you pull up your guide, what you're going to have is a code to Flowdesk. If you don't already use it, this will just give you 50% off your first year. Um, and then this is just a little bit into setting up your Flowdesk. So I'm going to um, share another screen with you. Hold on. I'm going to share an actual Flowdesk with you. So if you're new to Flowdesk, when you come into this platform, um, over in the corner, you're going to want to fill in your, you're going to go want to click on this little circle here and then go to branding. This is where you can upload your logo, any of your brand colors, if you have custom brand colors or just colors that you want to use in general, and then any of your custom fonts. Flowdesk itself will have a list of fonts that you can use, but if you have like a brand guideline and you want to upload those fonts here, you can do so. Uh, company name, website name, your address, any social links that you want to add are all here. Also, if you click into, um, let's see, where is it? Domain setup. Um, a lot of people have issues with their emails going to spam. So you want to go ahead and verify your domain here. That will help with um, just that issue of your, your emails going to spam. Um, and then you can also change any of your opt-in setups here. So if you want people to double opt-in, a thank you page for that. Um, I will also say here, I would check with your broker to see what other regulations or rules you need added to any email that you send. Um, you could add one logo there, but if you want to add other logos, you can do so at the bottom. So that would be like anything brokerage related, fair housing related, um, MLS related, anything that you need from a compliance standpoint, make sure that you have that noted so that you include those in your emails also. So I'm going to share with you. So as you click into some of the emails, it'll bring you to a template. Some of the things we want to have done first is we want to have our segment set up. So let me just move this over really quick. Hold on. So um, the way that you're going to do that is you're going to export a CSV file of anyone that you have worked with in the past, um, anyone that you want to add to your email list. Now, mind you, I would be careful with who you're uploading. For me, what I did is I uploaded anybody that's worked with us, that's put in a request to work with us, any lead that we have, people that we've worked with. I don't want to just add random people to my email list. I want it to be people who are essentially a client of ours already or potentially going to be a client of ours. Um, what you're going to then do is go to audience and you're going to add subscriber. So you can upload a CSV or if you only have a couple people and you want to add individual, you can do it this way. Um, once you do that, you can add people to a different segment. So let me show you as you upload, um, it'll all go here and then it will ask you if you want to load into a segment. So the segments that I have in my business are our clients. So that full email list that I mentioned, and then I also have a segment for post-closed buyers and post-closed sellers. I'll get into that a little bit more in a second, but um, you can get as crazy as you want with this. So some people have like buyer leads, seller leads. Um, some people have like, if you have a niche and you want to have a lead magnet, you can have a different email marketing plan for those people. I like to keep it super simple. So some of this is related to my coaching programs, but I just have database close transaction buyers, close transaction sellers. Um, you can tag people however you want. And if you have people that show up in more than one segment, it's okay. You can exclude or include, and it doesn't email people twice. With that being said, what happens when you click into your, um, the guide that I sent, as you click into um, the templates, what they'll do is they'll pull up what I like to do is set folders for different things. So if you want to add any of the buyer flows or the, I'm sorry, the buyer templates or the seller templates or just your general like email marketing into folders so you have them categorized, you can do that like this. So I have my listing templates, my um, just like regular templates for my email database, my buyer emails, 
that kind of thing. Um, and then what's really cool is they'll also go right here into your emails. So as you get a template, let me pull up a template. The way that you can use this is, hold on, let me show you. I'm actually going to start a new one. So what I would do first is I would take all of the templates in the guide that I have and then upload them and save them into different folders so that you have them categorized, right? Here is one that we send as a thank you for um, just a little thank you to our clients for being a part of our business. And we attach a barcode for a coffee. But the cool thing about Flowdesk is I deleted it, but it'll automatically put your logo right here. And then you can also have all of your fonts saved on the side. So it's super easy to upload a photo. You're just going to go upload image. And then you can choose any images that you have or that you want to use. So probably not a foot pick, but um, you can keep all of your photos in a, like a saved file that you would use for email marketing. And then, sorry, let me move this out of the way again. Um, you also can change the layout of anything. And then you also can link things here. So on this one, what I would do is I would just change out the photo to something that matches your brand. Make sure your logo is at the top, which it should autofill if you already put your logo in to your profile. And then you can just edit these things the way that you want them to. So for me, this one just thanks them. I would make it in your voice or your tone, um, change anything that's an I to a we if you're a team or a he, you know, anything that verbiage wise that needs to be updated. And then this is where I would put that Starbucks barcode. So if you were adding an image, you would just go here, upload your image, and then it would save. Um, I have some notes in here. So like this is just telling you how to find a Starbucks gift card code if you wanted it to. And there's some things that you'd want to edit. So like obviously put your name in here. So if you wanted to then go ahead and send this, what you would do is you would make sure it looks like it's coming from where you want it to come from. <clears throat> and then edit these. Some of these are templates, so they don't have this part edited into the way that I used it. So I would just make this something that's engaging, some sort of hook. Um, something that lets your clients know what to expect if they click into your email. And then you can put any preview text down here. So this is kind of important because you know when you get an email and then in your email it says the caption or like the header, the subject of your email, and then next week you can start to read what someone's saying. That is what would go down here. And then if you continue on, this is where you would add your segments of who you'd want to mail to. So this would be something that's going to my past clients. Um, but maybe I actually want to send it to my full database. So if I did, I would click here. It would automatically go to my full database. And maybe I didn't want to sell it, send it to people who had already bought with me. I just wanted to send to people who, you know, had were in our database fully. So I also have a past client segment. I could exclude that or you could exclude anything that you decide to segment your um, CSV files into. You would then hit save. It would say how many recipients you have, and then you would go continue on. You can choose if you want to send this email now, or you can choose if you want to send it later. So something that I would suggest doing is taking all of the nine templates that I give you in this and then just scheduling them to go out like every, you can decide what you want based off what works best for your business. But I would say do it like in our business, we do it probably every two weeks. Um, I just think that's how often I want our clients to hear from us. So you can decide what works best for you and schedule these all out if you if you want to do so. If you want them to feel more like they're, if it's something time sensitive, like the market updates, then maybe wait to do those till a little bit uh, closer to when you're ready to send. But if you click later, then what you can do is you can pick a day and you can also pick a time. So you can say, just pick what time is best for me, but I want it to go out in the morning. And then we'll automatically tell you, okay, 6.03 is the best time to send an email if you're wanting to send it in the morning. Um, you can also send a test if you want to just see how it looks, but that is the way that you would go ahead and send. <clears throat> I am going to go into, so that's basically the way that it would work for any email. If you want to create your new, e your own email, not based off the templates that I've sent you, they have a bunch of really great options in here that you can just go in and edit yourself. I found that Flowdesk is one of the easiest platforms to like manipulate or change. And they give you a lot of really great things to work with. So like if you go in, you can change things around, you can change the fonts really easily. 
Um, they also have on their website email like guides, not email guides, sorry, video guides. So you can go ahead and watch any guides that you want also. Um, I am going to show you into a workflow because in my templates, I have a post-close seller and a post-close buyer workflow. And I love these because what I found is that if you are somebody who has a big database or plans to have a big database or does a lot of transactions or plans to have a lot of transactions, something that I found, um, that really helps us in our business is using a workflow to keep in touch with past clients. So the two flows, <clears throat> excuse me, that I use most are a post-close seller and a post-close buyer. And I'm going to show you what those look like. So you're going to want to upload those templates to your flow desk. I'm going to pause this so I can show you into it. And then a workflow is really cool because you can tailor it to whatever you want it to be. Um, some people use these for like leads. So if someone signed up as a lead on your email um, or on your website, what you could do is have a, that trigger something. So they sign up on your website that triggers an email to go out thanking them for joining. Maybe a day later, you send out an email just introducing yourself. Uh, three days, like you could, you could customize it to however you want things to flow. Here's how I use my post close buyer flow. So as soon as I add someone into the segment close transactions buyer, so how you would want to do that is you could potentially do a Zapier from your database. Um, or you could just manually upload that person's email and contact info into that flow. Um, so this is my post-close buyer flow. What happens the second that they move into that flow is you get an email congratulating them on their purchase. So let me show you into this. All of these you're going to want to change to to match whatever you want them to say. But so like here's an example of the email that I sent at closing. So just a picture, change this to whatever you want it to be. If you don't have branding photos, you also can go right here. I'm not going to exit that. If you exit this, there's something that says, um, there's two different links where you can go and you can search for just stock images. Um, and then if you go down here, so I just link, leave a Google review for us. It's thanking them, letting them know we're here for them post-close. Um, if you decide to link something, these don't have links because they should be linked to your own business. So if you're going to leave a Google review link, what you're going to want to do is grab that from your Google or your Zillow profile down here and then link it here. If you wanted to link some sort of like, say you had a guide of things to do after you close on a home, you also can attach things like this, attach a file and it will upload the file there. Um, and then just edit these. Always remember to change your name. So for me, though, the way that this reads is someone adds, gets added, a sus subscriber gets added to the segment. The flow starts there. So then I send out a email that says congratulations, asking them for a review. The way that you would do that in yours is you would just hit add and then you would hit email and then you could duplicate an existing email. So that would be one of your the emails that you've saved from me um, or you could create a fully new one. Uh, let me get rid of that for my flow. So what you would want to do is add an email. This goes out as soon as they're added into the segment. Then I have one that goes out 30 days later. So it just says one month down. Um, and then when you're adding, you can go add, time delay, wait one day, wait 30 days, wait to a certain day of the week, wait to a, a different day of the year. Um, I just do mine 30 days after, and I just have a 30 day check-in. Um, after that, I add and I do another time delay. So I wait another 30 days. I do the same coffee email that I just talked about. And I offer them just a gift of thanks, thanking them for using us. There's a coffee on us. Hope moving went well. You can edit these to say whatever you want. Um, from there, what's really cool is what I do in my business is so those email templates that you have that are the nine that come with it, where you're sending those every two weeks, every 30 days, whatever works for your business. So after we get to this part in my segment, then I add subscribers to just go into my regular email flow. So um, if they weren't already, like say they were a lead that came in and just went into a post close, here's where you would go add, and then you would do um, take an action as the next step. And then what you could do is you could do add subscriber to a segment and then add them to your regular realtor database segment. Um, I have then a year home anniversary, and then you can keep going as long as you want. So a lot of times in our business, we tend to forget about those people that just aren't 
maybe someone that became your best friend or someone that you would grab a coffee with. And so you could go on for the next 10 years, 50 years, however, just sending them an email every year, just saying, Hey, just checking in. It's been five years since you bought a home. Here are some things to think about. Um, for me, mine go into my regular email marketing segment. So I only go to two years, but you could tailor this to whatever works for your business. So for me, after the one year mark, then I have an email that goes out and I just say, Hey, thinking of you, how's everything going? Do you want to grab a coffee and check, you know, catch up on something? I like this because I feel like my goal is to stay, like to have a good relationship with people. And if you ask someone to grab a coffee and they wanted to, they would respond and say, I would, I can't wait. I would love to, here's my schedule. And if they didn't, at least they know that you had made the attempt to be like, you know, friendly with them or keep in touch with them. So that's how mine goes after 30 days of this home anniversary at one year. And then I have another one and I say that it's been two years. Um, here's, I'm going to show you this one really quick. So in mine, I just, it's, pretty similar to the one year, but I just have some tips on what you could do at two years. So maintenance of your home. I like like if you had mortgage insurance when you bought and you want to check values, reach out to me. Um, insurance is something that I say to check for. So like if check your insurance premiums to make sure like, you know, over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of costs. A lot of things have gone up in price from construction standpoints and insurance values didn't match. So I just give them a couple of tips on what they could do or things that they could look out for. Um, like I said, customize this to work however you want. And then I complete my workflow. So super simple and super easy to use here. Um, that is the way that a flow works. You can do however you do this, however you want. I am going to show you um, one more thing emails. Okay, cool. So, um, if you have an email, like the templates for a seller where you are only sending it once and then you need to duplicate it to send it to somebody else, you can save it into your folders here. And then what you can do. So say I was sending my seller, um, one of these, these are buyer email templates, but let's say I was sending a buyer, your under contract email. Uh, here's what I would do is you can just click here and you can hit duplicate. It'll duplicate it here. And then it'll also go, um, this is just your normal email, not in your folders. And then what you could do is just edit it. If you're sending it to just one person, not a full segment, same thing. So fill everything in and then, um, make sure this reads the way that you want it to. So like, this is just something that I had in there. And then if you're just sending it to one person, you can add an individual and just do it like this. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to point out? Oh, forms. Forms are really cool on Flowdesk. If you have some sort of lead magnet or you want a place on your social media or your website where people can join into your email list. So this is just a little pop-up. This is something that I embedded in our website so that if you are on our website, um, after like, let's say 30 seconds, this pops up and asks you to join our, our mailing list. And then you could see how many people opt into it. But something else that is really cool is um, link in bio, magical. So if you have a link in bio where you wanna link more than one thing, or you want people to be able to join your email list and you don't have a full website, these are really cool because you can edit these to say whatever it is that you want. So like you could say, hi, I'm Molly. Let me see if I can find one that I like. So maybe I edited this and I said, hi, I'm Molly. Uh, here's a little bit about me. I could add a photo here if you want to join my email list here. And then here are other things that I could link. So kind of the gist of a, oh, what's that website? Um, Oh my gosh, I'm blinking. Um, kind of the gist of like any sort of linkable thing that you have in your bio. Um, mine right now is Stan Store, but these are way more aesthetically, like these look so much better in my opinion. So uh, check these out and play around with these also. But also if you just wanted some sort of pop-up, those are here. And then um, here's a full page one. 
So like if you have some sort of lead magnet, here's where you could do a lead magnet download. And then you can start a full flow for anything like this. So say you are a relocation specialist and you're like, do you want my relocation guide? Add this link to your profile or wherever it is that you're sharing that information. And then you could start a flow of what happens when they put in this email, when they put in their email address to get your free guide. So say somebody clicked on this and they said, I want to download your free guide. You could go into your flows. You could have a flow that started when someone enters into this segment, start this flow, and then you could attach your freebie there. So let me show you. So say you started a new workflow, we, you could use one of these. So like a sales sequence or a freebie. So lead magnet delivery is right here. How cool that they already have this ready for you. So if somebody downloads your lead magnet, you would add a trigger that they were added to a segment of new leads. Um, then you could edit these. So as soon as they sign up, it sends them an email with their freebie. Um, then you could add as many steps as you want. A day later, you check in to see how they like it. A month later, you check in to see if they want to set up an appointment with you, so on and so on. Um, that is the general gist of Flowdesk. A little bit on topics and emails. Something that I've noticed is that people think that their email has to be this long, drawn out thing. I really found that just a simple email is better than something that no one's going to take the time to read. So just a note to say hi, just a note to share one thing that worked for you, um, a client win, a story that you think might help others. Don't get too complex with your email marketing. I think if you look in your own inbox, the things that are bland or drawn out or boring or have too much on them are the ones that you skip through. And something that's just like a little pop in to say hello and share something with you that looks aesthetically pleasing is usually what I find I want to open. Um, <clears throat> I think with that, the best way to use this so that you don't get busy and not use it would just be to go in, set up all your emails that are ready to send out, schedule them for later in the month or later in the week. And, um, then just keep note of things that like maybe questions that people ask you when you're on a buyer or seller appointment, just nice things that you want to share with the world. And then that's kind of how I just keep note of what I want to share for the next couple months. Um, play around with this, get comfortable in Flowdesk. It is so easy to use. I've had such great results with using email marketing more so than I even thought I would have. But um, I hope that this helps get you started. And if you have any questions, you can always email me directly.